Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a first look at Gecko Linux. Now Gecko Linux comes in two versions, stable and rolling. I think they call it static and rolling. And it's based on OpenSUSE, so it's based on Leap and Tumbleweed. Now I'm going to be taking a look at the static version of Cinnamon. It comes in several flavors, including Cinnamon, XFCE, GNOME, LXQ, and a few others. So there's quite a few selections of desktop that you could use. The way it differs from OpenSUSE is that it tries to make OpenSUSE easier to install. So it uses Calamari's instead of the traditional OpenSUSE installer. And it just is supposed to be more user friendly is the whole shtick behind it. So that's what we're going to do today is take a first look at it. Now, we're going to take a look at this in VirtualBox. And we'll go ahead and give it an install and see how how it does. Interestingly, it doesn't have its own logo here. It just uses the OpenSUSE Leap logo. So we get a, a little. You don't want you won't hear it because I don't have audio set up for my computer, but it has a little opening sound, kind of like Windows XP used to have. So very interesting there. So let's go ahead and give it an install, shall we? So like I said, this uses Calamari. It's kind of like everything else does these days. We're going to do next. I'm not in Chicago. You're close. I'm in Detroit. Hit next. And erase disk. We'll leave it in no swap. Next. And we'll do our user details. All right, and we'll leave it as use the same administrator password, but we don't need to lo log in automatically. I never do that. I don't think anybody does. And we'll hit install and install now. Now this is going to be using uh, ext4. Yeah, there's nothing special about the file system here. I thought maybe it'd use butterfs. I thought that that um, OpenSUSE started using butterfs by default, but I could be remembering wrong. Well, this will take about three or four minutes, so I'll cut away and come back. Okay, so like I said, that took about four minutes or so. We'll go ahead and what I'm going to do now is normally you'd hit re this restart checkbox and then hit done. I'm just going to hit done and then shut down so that I can remove the installation media from VirtualBox. Okay, we'll look at startup times here and see how they how the, how it does. I don't expect it to be terrible or anything. Linux is pretty fast starting up pretty much no matter what distribution you use these days. Interestingly, we're not getting full screen right off the bat, which is weird because we did in the live CD. So something went interesting there. We'll see if it live full screen comes up here. If not... It's not loading. This has something to do with VirtualBox. Almost guaranteed. All right, so we're going to... Oh, wait a minute. Here we are. Weird. So I went out of full screen, went back to full screen, and we have the system. Like I said, something to do with, to do with VirtualBox, probably because I have 3D acceleration enabled, which I don't normally do, but it kept prompting me to do it, so... All right, so no welcome screen, anything to speak of. We have some a, lag, a language installer up here. Other than that, a fairly clean Cinnamon experience in terms of layout. It's using Numix as the theme here. And I'll talk a little bit more about the themes in a few minutes when we go into the settings panel. So first, we'll look at Firefox here and take a look at the version number. Now, this I would expect this to be an ESR. Because, again, this is based on Leap, which means it's the stable version of OpenSUSE. So everything's going to be 
farther behind than what you'd normally expect because they want it to be all stable and stuff. So this is the, yeah, this is 78.5.0, the ESR, ESR release. And we can close this. Now I'm going to open up a terminal before I go through and open up anything else and see if we can find Oops. So we'll do a free dash M. We've got 601. Now this is after I've opened up Firefox, so it's possible that this is a little bit higher than what it would normally be. Uh, let's see, uname dash A. This is using the Linux kernel 5.3, which is quite old. It's actually two LTSs ago because the last LTS was 5.10 and then the one before that was 5.4. So this is, like I said, this is quite old in terms of Linux kernels and stuff. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're not worried about having the latest and greatest, this is going to be just fine for everybody who's like that. If you're interested in something more rolling, something more recent, they have the Tumbleweed version available. So... Uh, that's not a huge deal. If this was all that was available, then it would be a little bit of a concern. So let's see if HTOP is installed. It is not. So we're going to clear this out and see if I remember how to install programs on OpenSUSE. So I think this is going to make me look stupid if it's not right. Who said I didn't know how to do stuff in OpenSUSE, huh? <laughs> I haven't used OpenSUSE or anything based on OpenSUSE in probably two or three years. It's been quite a while. I forgot how slow Zipper is, though. A few moments later. Okay, so <laughs> that installing that package took longer than installing the entire operating system. It took close to 15 minutes. Now, I'm 100% positive that the that wouldn't happen again. So I'm actually going to try after I look at it HTOP to install something else that I'm assuming is in the in the repositories because I want to see if that time is always that long because if it always if, if, if it is always that long that's ridiculous if it's just the first time thing that it has to go through and retrieve all the repositories that's fine I can deal with that all right so first so we got H top here we got 87 tasks 176 threads still using about 164 megs in terms of RAM the m most intensive task we have here looks like it's going to be Xorg, yeah. In terms of memory, cinnamon, yeah. Um, so let's quit out of that. And we'll try to install something else. So zipper. Let's see if I can actually. Yeah. Install. GIMP. See if GIMP is installed or in the repos. Yeah, this is a lot quicker than it was. Um, so that's not that, that's not a big big deal. So the first time you install something from z using Zipper, it's going to take a while. Obviously, not something that I'd experienced before. But that's just the way things are sometimes, I guess. Uh, it's not something uh, you find on other distros all that much. Now, on Ubuntu, you do have to go through and do sudo like sudo apt update in order to get the most recent repository listings. So it, this is kind of like that. I guess I'm so used to the Arch way of doing things where you don't have to really update that kind of stuff. The mirrors are like kind of automatically updated in the background for whatever. But anyways, this worked just fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the applications that are installed. Minus HTOP and GIMP, obviously, because I just installed those. 
Now, accessories. These are just basic accessories. We've got a screenshot tool and a text editor, which I believe is probably going to be Genie. It says Z-X-E-D. I have never heard of that before in my entire life. So, oh, looks like it's a just a regular text editor, so nothing special there. Uh, let's see, so a screenshot tool is going to probably be... Yeah, this is, looks like it's the one that comes with Cinnamon normally. Okay. Uh, let's see, other than that, nothing out here. This is... a. Uh, Clipboard manager, calculator for cal calculator. Graphics, we got uh, LibreOffice draws here, GIMP I install, Pixis for managing your pictures. Internet, we got Firefox, Pigeon, Thunderbird, and Transmission. Office, LibreOffice still is here. Sound and video, we got Clementine for music, VLC for video. Uh, let's see, administration, this is going to be mostly stuff for. The terminal, I, I believe this is the Cinnamon Terminal. Oh, this is GNOME Terminal. Okay, so, so uh, does Cinnamon have its own terminal? I feel like it does. I might be remembering that wrong, too. Uh, preferences is going to be mostly our settings, so we'll just go ahead and go into our settings app here. Now, one thing I will admit is I've had this installed before and tried to do this video once. And I spent about 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get a dark theme. I still have never figured it out. So if anybody has used this before or use, I mean, is more familiar with Cinnamon than I am, let me know how you get a dark theme because I just choose Mint White Dark here. And I just assumed that, you know, the whole thing would go dark, but that's just for winners, window builders. Icons is for icons. Controls is just, you know... Oh, there we go. But it, weirdly, there's not a mint. There's not a mint version for here, a mint Y version for the dark. That's really weird. Okay, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll just go back to the 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 regular. In terms of themes, you got mostly you got the mint Y stuff and then some mate stuff here. And traditionally, we with. Uh, Cinnamon, you can add and remove stuff right from this uh, settings panel here. Other stuff in, in the settings, we got backgrounds. We'll look at the wallpaper, which you don't get any wallpapers other than this one, I believe. Yeah. That's exact. Oddly enough, the one that was there before isn't actually there. Um, I'm assuming that's just because it's not attached to that folder. traditional desktop effects. Now there's one down here that I wanted to look at called tiling. Enable window tiling and stamping. That's just going to be for, you know, this stuff here. Is there associated key bindings? Kinda. So use control to toggle between tile and snap mode. So it's not like, it's not like the, um, Pop OS tiling thing that you get with GNOME. This is just traditional window snapping. Like this here. Yeah. Alright. So nothing all that great there. Just traditional stuff. Applets is going to be for the bar. Down there at the bottom. Extensions. I'm not actually sure what extensions is. I'm going to find out for that. You can tell I don't use cinnamon like hardly at all. Transparent panels, Cinnamon Maximus. This is going to be like... Oh, this is for like GNOME extensions. Hmm. So you could use G-Tile here. Which is the tiling window manager extension thing that comes with... Uh, I think that's what the Pop OS one is based off of. Is that. So, so these are like GNOME extensions. That's interesting. I didn't even know you could do that with Cinnamon. Like I said... I haven't played around with Cinnamon nearly as much as I probably should have. Uh, so you get workspaces down here at the bottom. And you, we could add one here. And the animation is kind of cool, right? Surprisingly, the animations actually work on VirtualBox. Something that isn't normally the case for me. Now, 
the other thing, last thing I want to take a look at is Yast. So if you're not familiar, Yast is the GUI way of installing programs and managing programs on OpenSUSE. And this is Yast. Now, I've the, one of the reasons why I've never spent much time with Yast or with OpenSUSE is because I don't care for Yast all that much. I find it cumbersome, kind of bloated. Um, but a lot of people are going to disagree with that because a lot of people like OpenSUSE and a lot of people just swear by Yast. Kind of like the Arch, us Yarch users swear by Pac-Man and uh, Pamac and the AUR and stuff. Yast is kind of that only with a much smaller following, I feel. But there's just a ton of stuff here you can use Yast for. To, you can use it for software management, obviously, which is what this looks like here. So you can go through and open this up. It's going to refresh the repositories and stuff before you open up. And it'll do that every single time. But you can always skip it. So if we do a search for Steam. Let's just look at for Steam. So we do have Steam here in the repositories. And it'll be easy to install. Obviously, uh, you'd have to make sure that you have the appropriate drivers for your video card, which would also be available in certain repositories. Now, I don't believe every repository is enabled by default, but it kind of looks like they are. Yeah, if you want to install NVIDIA drivers, you'd have to enable those repositories, which is very easy through YAS. You just go through and find the appropriate one that you have to enable. Now, the easiest way to find the most appropriate one is to Google it, because it's going to depend on which driver you need you know because some of these repositories only go up to so far like i said if you need nvidia stuff it's all here you just gonna have to figure out which one of these ones you need to install so that is yes in terms of a software manager most of the stuff you'll find in, in the default repositories so one of the reasons why a lot of people really, truly love Yast is because it's more than just the ability to manage your software. You can also manage things like your network and your kernel, your bootloader, the services manager, so you can manage stuff that goes through System D, even stuff like your mail server and your NTP configuration. There's also firewall and pseudo and user and group management stuff in this. So it's just really your one-stop shop for everything that manages your Linux system all in a GUI style application. Now, the reason why I don't care for it is because it really does feel to me like everything just kind of thrown in here. Um, there is some organization and stuff and it's very, very powerful. It's just not new user friendly, like even a little bit. So that's that was always my biggest problem with it, but you can never deny that it's probably the most powerful tool on any Linux distribution in terms of actually managing your system because for most other Linux distros a lot of this stuff you just have to do in the terminal or you have to do it with several different obscure GTK or GUI applications like if you wanted to manage your firewall there's a there's a GUI application to manage UFW but it's a separate application this is literally everything right here in one place so that is Yast. Probably this is the reason why a lot of people come to OpenSUSE. And with Gecko, it's easier to install. So if you've always been a little um, overwhelmed or maybe intimidated, I guess is the real word, of OpenSUSE in terms of you know, installing, which oh, installing OpenSUSE, from what I remember, isn't really all that hard, but it's not as easy as you get it when you're using something like Calamari's. So first impressions of Gecko Linux, very good. It's basically OpenSUSE with Calamari's is the way I take it. It's not a very heavy distro. There's not a ton of applications that come pre-installed. So you're not going to be getting a lot of bloat and stuff that you don't need, which is good. A lot of Destros these days come with five or six media players and, you know, two office suites and stuff like that. You don't get any of that. You just get the bare minimum. And you could even go even more minimum if you went with the bare bones version, because then you would install your own desktop environment and all that stuff. So I'm pretty impressed with it. Now, 
there are some OpenSUSE quirks that I probably wouldn't be able to get past. Like that first install of an application took quite a while. But that's just a, a thing that you have to deal with. I'm not a big fan of Yast. No matter how powerful it is, I, I just get kind of lost in it a little bit. So Yast isn't for me. But I know a lot of, like I said, a lot of people really, really like Yast. And the software management inside the terminal zipper is fairly robust. And it's not something that I've used a lot. I'm actually quite surprised that I remembered how to even install something using zipper. So that's surprising in and of itself. So that's the first look at Gecko. If you've used this or you plan on using this, please leave a comment below and tell me what your experience with it is. I like our conversations and stuff. So would you use Gecko Linux? Are you interested in something like this? Or would you just use OpenSUSE? So leave that comment below. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast on Twitter at the at the LinuxCast on Facebook. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. And uh, with that in mind, I would like to thank our patrons, Devon Marcus Merrick Camp 514. Thank every thank you guys for your support of the channel. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>